of Integrative Medicine at Trinity Health of New England. I want to welcome you to this week's installment of Wellness Wednesday. Wellness Wednesday is designed to bring in brief format tools for wellness that will benefit you, our colleagues, and our community at large. I'm Dr. Kathy Muller, and I'm here with my colleague Tim Michaels today for this week's installment where we're going to be talking about acupressure. So, Kathy, I've been really looking forward to this topic. And I started doing some research into um, the benefits of wringing your hands, which most of us kind of attribute to somebody who's nervous or stressed or, you know, let's say, uh, has been through trauma. But I was really surprised how many articles there were that talked about it in terms of uh, releasing stress in muscles and being good for you, which I know you're not going to teach us how to wring our hands. Um, but now I'm fascinated to learn how to do it correctly. So. Well, and you know, for, uh, for a very long time, part of our service for integrated medicine when we were with St. Francis was inpatient massage, and a lot of times we would do hand massage. And it, it always seemed to me, um, like many things in integrated medicine, too simple to make a difference, and yet it really does. It's incredibly, um, it releases all kinds of endorphins. It's really very relaxing. And so we used it as a modality that anybody could learn how to do. It's really very simple. So that may be actually a future Wellness Wednesday. We'll have our massage therapist come on and teach us some hand massage. I think that would be awesome. The other thing I noticed maybe about a month ago, we were out uh, with our colleagues at Johnson Memorial, and you were doing acupuncture treatments, but in between you were showing people the pressure points at the base of their thumb. And it was fascinating how every single person in the room stopped what they were doing and we're trying to figure out how to do that. So there's this real attraction to how do I reduce my stress doing this? So yeah. uh, show us how to de-stress. All right, so I'm gonna share my slide because it's a little bit easier when you can see some pictures. Got it. So let's do some sharing here. Mm -hmm. All right, so because we are just Coming out, we hope, of a pandemic, we're going to start with points for stress and worry. And I just want to point out, acupuncture points are uh, were discovered thousands of years ago, somewhere between 3,000 and 3,500 years ago, in all different places all over the world. The same points, which I just find fascinating. And um, so these points have always been stimulated with all kinds of different things. I mean, rocks and sticks many, many years ago, and now we use these little tiny, tiny needles. So you don't need an acupuncture needle to be able to stimulate the points. It's then just called acupressure instead of acupuncture. So let's start with this one. So this acupuncture point for stress and worry is called Heart 7. And it's also called Shen Men. As you probably remember, Tim, we have the point on our ear as well. So spirit gate. There isn't really a good word for it in English, but that's what it translates into. And so if you hold your palm up, and you kind of, acupuncture points are a lot of time in divots, in little, little drop-offs. So if you run your thumb down just below your pinky bone, and I'm having, I can't see me, so I can't see what I'm doing, but um, if you run your finger down to the bottom of your pinky bone, and this little divot right in there, and it should be a little bit tender, actually. You can use your thumb, you can use your finger, you can use a ballpoint pen. And you just manipulate that point in there. And when you find a point that's tender and kind of right in that deep point, that is your heart seven. And you can just kind of use your thumb and just kind of massage it and just spend 20 or 30 seconds doing that one and then switching sides and doing it on the other side. And as you kind of move your thumb around, you'll know when you're in the right spot. You will know when you, when you were there. Does that make sense? Okay. It does. So, can you stop sharing for a minute? Yeah. Oh, I think. All right. So, I, I lost my control panel. So, we're going to have to start this again. No, that's okay. Keep going through. And I think at the end, we'll stop sharing and we're going to practice together doing each one. All right. So, I can't find the WebEx. Oh, this is so weird. I'm down in one corner. You're down in the other corner. This has not happened before. I don't know what I'm doing. It doesn't and I matter. The slide. Using the stress point, now everything is relaxed. So. <laughs> exactly. All right. How do I? Okay. Let me just work on this technology just a little bit. Okay. Here we go. Now yeah. I can. Okay. 
Now we'll do the next one. And I'm going to move me so that I can see me so I can see what I'm, oh, I can't. Okay. So the next one we're going to do is an acupuncture point that we use for headaches a lot. And I also use it for all kinds of pain. So whenever someone comes in with pain, we almost always use this large intestine four, which is also called HEGU. It's called joining valley. And they always have these lovely descriptive terms when they're talking about these points and where they're located on the bottom. So this is probably the one that we're talking about on the thumb. So it's in this valley in between your thumb and your index finger. And again, it's kind of a tender point. It's right in that divot. And so I usually use my thumb and you just kind of Stick your thumb right in there. And again, find a tender point and just kind of mash your thumb in there. You can do it the other way too, the way that the picture shows. I just always go over the top and down into the valley rather than up into the valley. And you just kind of massage that. And then you can switch and do the other hand as well. Hmm. Just for 15, 20, 30 seconds, whatever. And it can work very nicely for headaches. And they're tender, right? They're, you don't think of points being uncomfortable on your hands, but acupuncture points will tell you where they are. So is it uncommon for one side to be more tender than the other? I don't think it's uncommon. I think when points are really active, when they really need to be stimulated, I think they yell at you, right? They, they, tell, us that, they tell you that they're there. You can feel the difference, um, both as an acupuncturist and also as the person doing it on yourself. You can tell where the point is. Before you go to the next one, can you clarify a little bit better? What do you mean by an active point? So, so there are thousands of switches all along these energy currents that flow through our bodies. And what I love is when, when I learned acupuncture, I was a little skeptical about this. I thought, no way, there's not like, it's not separate from your blood vessels, but it is, it's an entirely different system. And these energy channels flow in this very predictable way through divots in between muscles and in between bones. And all along the way, there are points that change the flow of energy. And those are these acupuncture points. So when a point is needing to be used, it's a little bit more tender. The needle goes in a little bit differently. The needle gets held on sometimes by the tissue under the skin. So it just feels different when you hit the correct acupuncture point for that person for that day. But the food we eat, how we move, our mood, uh, personal history, family history, genes, all changes how, how responsive we are to which point. So, do the, so those points that are tender and are active, are they blocking or holding energy? Is that why they're more tender? I think so, or maybe they're just encouraging energy to flow better and they're active. I'm not sure it's always a negative thing. I think okay. it can be a positive thing like, hey, keep using me, you know? Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. And then we have one more, and this one's for nausea. And a lot of people are familiar with this um, because you can get those things called C-bands, which are bracelets that you put on. They have a little button on them that goes over this pressure point. I'll tell you, I used them for the first three months of all of my pregnancies, and they worked really, really nicely. It's also a nice one for car sickness. Um, but people usually put them right at the wrist crease, and that's not where the point is. And this is an interesting thing about acupuncture points, too, is they're measured by your own body. So to measure this one, you put your own three fingers on your wrist. And so if I used your hands to measure my point, like my point would be down here, right, instead of using mine. And so right here is where my point for me is. And again, if you kind of move your, your thumb in there, you can find a space in between the two muscles that are there. And it's, again, kind of tender, and that's your pericardium six or neguan, inner gate. Calms the nerves, opens the chest a little bit, um, and helps kind of uh, everything kind of go down where it's supposed to instead of coming up like happens sometimes with car sickness or, or nausea. So it's a good one. Hmm. Okay. I like that one. Yeah, they're, they're very handy, and I'll, I'll stop sharing now. These slides will be um, available at the end of the, at the, end of the, vid, of the um, video, but they're just, they're handy things to have where we can help ourselves just feel a little bit better. So can you go back to the first one? I mm -hmm. did try, this is new to me, but I got lost with the pinky bone. 
I tend because <laughs> I'm not clinical. So I tend to think my pinky ends up here. Yeah. And you're so saying from all side, the way down. Said, all the way down. I should have said on the, the pinky side of your hand. And so there should be a bone that kind of sticks out right there. Yeah. And you want to go a little towards the outside and in that divot right there. Yeah. So you can feel the divot easily. And you're right. Yeah. If you move your thumb, you can feel the the uh, stretching there. Yeah, okay. the tendon going. Yeah. <laughs> So I was thinking, I didn't know I had a pinky bone down here, so now I'm thinking that I didn't pay attention in biology either. So, <laughs> <laughs> there so we tell me just, just quickly, because I know uh, we're, we're running out of time. Hand washing, right? So what are the things they can easily do using these pressure points when they're washing their hands? Well, I think we hold a lot of tension in this, this part of your thumb right here. And that's one of the things that we really work on when we're doing hand massage. So that's a nice thing to kind of, uh, kind of, uh, and ring is the word that comes to my hands in my mind, yeah. but not in a bad way. But you know, really working at those muscles and spending a little time at that stress point right there, that heart seven point right there, um, and just kind of, you know, just kind of manipulating it as we're supposed to be, you know, singing the ABCs twice. Um, we can, we can just kind of really feel the stress that we keep in our hands and try and relieve it a little bit. It's all part of that whole mindful thing. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate this today. And so I hope no one will think I'm odd as I'm in meetings trying to figure out where my pinky bone ends and remember <laughs> these. <laughs> yeah, you just keep your hands on your lap. Nobody even knows you're doing it. There you go. There you go. Yeah. All right. Thanks so much, Kathy. Thanks, Tim. See you next week.